All right, uh, you already know about my profile and everything, so I just want you to please forget about adult education and everything. And my topic is a bit different because I want you to be happy and uh, think about something to have some social welfare or social responsibility rather than being busy all the time. I know we all professors are admissions. We're busy and everything. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, social welfare, plus I will add the education, and then I will come up with the formula of happiness. Uh, we all, uh, the people, all the time we make a struggle, actually, to go for happiness. You know, God has created this world. When he was happy, he created world. He was happy, he created very wise prophets around. When we are happy, we try to add something in our life. When you want to see your family happy, why you want to see your family happy? You want to get a good job, why you want to get a good job? Because you go for happiness. All of the time, around the world, people are looking for their happiness. They keep struggling. And I guess there are loads of books, loads of movies, and videos, and YouTubes, and everything you might have seen. But there are some of the systematic, sequential approaches if we adopt, we can actually improve our life in a better way. So we go with this. Corporate happiness, there are some guiding notes which I will present over here. Okay, this is a word we make a struggle. We are born, we grow up, our parents put money, and then we go to school. I don't know which school you had gone, North American or South American, all that. You know, you keep putting efforts, you're very difficult, then you reach to university, struggle, then you go to job, struggle, get married, families, everything. You know how life works. And most of the people, they have life up to maybe 60, 70, and after that, you just back off, and then you become religious after that. Whether some good people, they start before as well. A struggle it starts with education. I mean, it's very unfortunate that some of the people on this earth planet, they don't learn from education. They have an education, but they don't follow education. If I ask this question to you all, have you ever heard any professor or any parent or any elder brother, sister is telling you to do something unethical or anything that's not favorable for the society? No, they don't. When your teacher did not tell you this, your parents did not tell you this, your books did not tell you anything, your movies did not tell you anything, then why we end up to these things? What is that motivational thing? Or what is that thing that really actuates us to go there? It's a problem. Education doesn't give this. Education teaches us to be the better one. Then we go for the career. Uh, we enter into the organization, so we have a little bit of politics, so we have a little bit of problems. OK, I have to go up. I don't want my colleagues to take this position. I'm supposed to take this position. Everything keeps struggling. Money. I think. Uh, if you ask somebody, some people say, oh, money is not everything, because they don't have. If, they, if somebody has money, they'll say, oh, it's something. I'm not saying it's everything. They're very poor people I have seen in my life. They have only money. They're poor, actually. But we look for money. We're looking for better life, because money cannot buy anything. I do understand, but money can give you some of the comfortability approaches in life. We have seen that. Now, with that, uh, uh, the model from the education, career, money, again, we'll reach money back with the comfortable corporate life. If you ask somebody that, uh, oh, you got a job? How is the job, man? Some people will really tell you that, oh, my job is so difficult. I'm sorry. You know, I'm really not happy about this job and everything. Human being looks for comfortability. It's a human nature. We look for these three things. We always look for comfortable life. We always look for recognition. We always look for some amount of money as well. But the problem is that there are many people that don't give us these all, even that I deserve it. The problem, unhappiness, it starts when I deserve and you don't give me, things will be very bad. If you deserve somebody doesn't give you, then things, you start actually generating something different in your mind. And the moment you start thinking, the more you think about that, it will lead you towards that negativity. We have to control this brain, actually. That's a big problem. 
when we finish any movie, we say, oh, we, we got a very salutary effect on that movie. I'm, I'm going to do this one. When you read a book, you know, it's okay. Oh, when you heard any professor, you say, oh, that's great. I'm going to improve something. So we need to improve these old things. We struggle. We make this kind of struggle. That's what you need. Happiness, looking for that. But there are other factors. Then we go for corporate efforts. Employers, customers, employees. Well, bosses, employers are not actually bad people. They actually become bad when you don't accept them. And I just would like to connect this with that corporate happiness is that some people are never happy in the organization. Have you seen, I'm sure you might have uh, met some of the, the people, if you meet somebody, they have a problem al in almost everything. They have never solution, they have nothing, you know. But you meet some other people, they have always solution. They, are, they see the thing so positive. But some people, I advise you as your colleague, do not meet anybody who has any kind of thing to insult you. Nobody has a right to insult anybody in the, in, the, in the corporate life. But some people do that. And that demotivation comes. You become unhappy. You leave the organization. The employer gets a problem. Customers, I'm sure there's no need to talk about that because they are the ones that they are running our companies, actually. People say they are our customers, but they're actually they are your partners. Anyway, look at the second one. The positive education, motivation, guidance, and mentoring. Some of the very good bosses, they mentor you too much about this. And then once you get mentoring from some of the positive people, you start getting that happiness, getting that positivity, that intention. When he retires, you take over his position, you continue the same. But if you see some of the negative people around you who are really spoil your career, when you become the, uh, taking his position and you're doing the same thing, things will not work. I worked in one of the Italian company a long time ago. I saw one boss when he was retiring. He prepared one document uh, that he was retiring, and then he, the next person will come. So he prepared one document, and he kept on the table. So we were close to him, so he called me that he prepared this document for the next person when he'll come, and he will see this one. I just asked him, sir, could you please tell me what is this document you have prepared this one? He prepared that document about that this company was this one. These are the pro, uh, positive people. This is a thing. If you need anything from me, I will always be there. I have taken everything from this company. I got ev almost everything, my life, my family, everything. We earn bread and butter from this company. So I want you to please take care of this company. So he put a note over there, the smiling one. When he had gone, another person came. He saw that. He called that person. He said that I have never seen any person who's leaving and he put the note like this, that you have to carry on, that you want to contribute the same thing. But we have seen some people when they leave, they're so happy, oh, I'm leaving this company, nobody will be able to continue because I messed up this one, isn't that? Some of the experience happen. This is what you instill, you keep it, you accept it, and it will go further for your life. It always happens. That's why we talk about this guiding uh, and the mentoring thing always come. Then exposure, maturity, prudence. I love the word prudence. I'm sure uh, he was talking about, Professor, talking about adult education. He is from English uh, domain. Prudence is something that you do extra, and then you don't take credit as well. That's OK. You do something. You know, OK, I will do because I just have this time for my company. But if I do something extra, I'm paying something on more. You do that. You know. But I'm more concerned about the stability, emotional stability. We talk about emotional intelligence and everything. Emotional stability is showing your mature uh, behavior. I guess this is one of the happiness as well. When you get some difficult task, when you get some difficult assignment from your boss, and then uh, uh, you don't want to take it, you make faces and everything, right? We're not happy, but you take it very pleasure way. OK, that's it. You don't have to do this. So what I'm saying about uh, on this slide, couple of efforts, we talk about the welfare. Okay, we start from the welfare. It has education that gives us a positive education because that's my speech. And it's a very quick speech, actually. We have half an hour. We can talk, you know, professors, we are being paid for this one. We can talk two, uh, two hours, three hours. Okay, that's what's expert I talked about. Now we come down. Business profitability. This is for the organizations. The corporate competency. Now, this competency is an other discussion, is the other issue. There are lots of people, they want to be competitive. Uh, but they don't work for their competency. I'm sure some of you, have you heard, have you watched that movie, uh, The Devil Who Wears the Prada? I'm sure you might have seen that. Have you watched? 
the devil who wears the Prada is, uh, she was very tough boss and uh, uh, you, you might have seen, yeah. You know, person who's working with the tough bosses, you will learn a lot. We say that I don't want to work with the tough boss, you will never learn anything. Ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you, I have learned this from my parents and my professors. If you really want to grow in your career, take a tough boss. If you really want to learn something, take a tough job, accept it. How many times Richard Branson has said that if anybody offers you a difficult job and you think you can do that, accept it and learn it. If you really want to learn from any professor, take a register to the course of the tough professor. Don't look for easy professor. You say, oh, this is a cool man. He doesn't give assignments and everything. Just register difficult professors. That you will learn. Tough boss, tough teacher, difficult job will give you the best experience, the best exposure. You need an exposure, need experience, which you can utilize later in your organizations. And that's possible through uh, the competency which you develop at a school and then later on you develop in the corporations as well. People, aptitude and attitude. This is very simple, you know, I don't want to talk about this English context of this one, but actually in the corporate level when you talk about the aptitude, there are many people, they have great skilled people, great competency, but if their attitude is not good, trust me, it's really they are not competent for to me, you know. But if somebody has great skills, and he has a great attitude to respond to anybody, even a little kid or middle hierarchy person, top hierarchy, so cool. He's the best ever person you can meet in your life. How many of you remember the best professors in your life? You always remember people because of their communication skills, because of they help you at that time. You also remember those who had a bad communication with us. I, I do remember, but you always remember those who had the best communication because they gave you something and you always uh, fix that in your mind. So I'm saying here about the COP efforts, I started from the welfare and then the positive education exposure. If we come down, of course, uh, that is uh, the uh, business profitability for the organizations, but actually we need to contribute something to the organization. I always uh, discuss with my colleagues about this one. In professionalism, there's no excuse. You cannot complain about the jobs. You cannot complain about the system. You cannot complain about the weather. You cannot complain about anything. If you really want to be successful in your life, keep your complaints low. See how your life is really getting better. But if you start complaining everything, Nothing, nothing affects anybody, but it's going to disturb you only, your own mind. Now, there are some hurdles in our life. Problem. You know what's the definition of problem? Problem means the unfavorable situation. You know Ben Hogan? My dad's favorite golf player, Ben Hogan. You might know about the Bruce Lee, I'm sure. You know Bill Gates at least, yeah? You know these three people, three, four people, what, is the, what was the commonality in these all people? They used to list down the problems. Problem number one, do I have the marker here? Okay, problem number one, problem number two, problem number three, then they we're actually looking at that problem number one. Can I solve this problem? Can I do something about this? Or yes, I can do something about this. So it's no more problem. I'm left with only two. Look at the way how the successful people look at the problems. Let's suppose you're not an MBR, you're not PhD, you're not doctoral program something, you know, you're not. But you took admission now. It was your problem, you're not doctor, but you took admission. It's no more problem because you're already working on that, isn't that? So no more problem, two, you are left with other problem. Maybe a, there is something, security problem around the world happening, you know, in this uh, international politics and everything. Can you do something about this? It's not your problem. It's a problem with the international community. So you're left actually with no problem. That's why how we look at the things. But this uh, uh, block is really big, I think, that really put us in the confusion. Confused. I'm confused what to do. You are confused what to do? What is not available in this world, please tell me. These days, uh, I was giving assignment to my student and she told me, what kind of assignment you have given? It's not in the Google. <laughs> she was expecting that everything should be on the Google, isn't that? So 
everything you do have, everything. Little kids, you know, they ask you, give me mobile, I want to search something. They, they born, this generation is born with Google and they cannot see anything. I remember my English professor, my English teacher, she used to tell us so much tough time to give us the pressy writing and grammatical structure and everything, you know. We still remember that. But these kids, they uh, consult Google as well. So what I'm saying about this particular point is that everything is available, but it's about how you, how we work on this one. You want to have the best communication skills? Go millions of videos available on YouTube. You want to have the best articles? Your university, your company, maybe your 40,000, the top rated journals are registered with your university. You go to free library to Dubai, you can have everything. Isn't that? So there's no confusion. I see some people I went to Japan, I'm sure you might have seen, there are some of the libraries, they are in the wall, in the wall. You know, the best, uh, I would like to refer to the professor, he was talking about the English writing. If you really want to write something and want to really uh, uh, think about something, try to sit near the wall and don't get anything that disturbs you. You write one page, you can write the best page. But if you write, sit like this and you, everybody, you will repeat the same page to read 10 times, you will not get the, uh, you will not grasp that page actually. Always confusion. This is human nature. You go to the library, you sit, and the door is open. You definitely can know, oh, who's a nice person entering the library now? Who's leaving? You know, our concentration is based on that one. But if you control everything will be proper. Stress. Oh, so many. Every, these days, I, I have seen so many motivational speakers everywhere. I mean, if you don't have a job, please become a motivational speaker. I mean, it's easy to be a motivational speaker. Any experience you do have, just, just talk on the stress level and everything. By the way, this stress is also self a kind of a thing which disturbs us. There's no stress uh, level. Uh, but I guess at times it happens. Uh, I have a point here about the stress level. Is that if you really, I have this point maybe in coming slides, but I want to mention here at the right time. Separate your home from the office. Separate your affairs with other affairs. Don't mix things you will never enjoy in your life. If you have corporate affairs, corporate life, keep it there. When you drive back home, never ever take any file from the office going back, you know, because you're taking the same tension. How you'll talk to your uh, kids, to your wife and everything. She needs time. But you take the same files and everything. Have you seen? I'm sure some of you, all of you are working in some of the uh, big organizations. You walk into the, I walk to one of the CEO, uh, his, his table, it's a big table, okay, just a table, nothing else, nothing else. A small mobile, at that time there was a Blackberry, but now we use the iPhones and everything, it was kept over there. I went to another CEO, I saw that all of the things on his table. He has a stapler, he has a punch machine, he has everything like he has a secretary himself, he has a photocopier, he's everything. My point in this particular discussion is that do not try to burden yourself unnecessary things. Because if, if you, for example, you know where you have put your file, you know where you have put your file, you can easily refer it. How many times it happens you browse a file which you're looking for from your own computer and we put search option in my own computer? It means I'm not organized. Just organized with the dates and everything, with the file, and then you can find easily. Isn't that? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the third point about the stress level. And the fourth one is, oh, no problem in the fourth one. Is it okay? See, problem's gone, maybe. <laughs> one more. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry for technical incompatibility. Yeah, oh, see? See the point and see the delay time in this point, fear. That's how much relevant, how much nature helps you in the similar examples. Fear multiply faster than, our, than rabbits. You know, in the night when you walk, I'm sorry, I'm trying to be a philosopher with you because it's a good day. So that's why I told you, be happy, have a good day. So when you're in the night, you walk, you feel somebody's behind you, but actually nobody's behind you. It's you. You invite unnecessary stuff to disturb you, actually. Nobody's there. You get an interview call, 
you have a paper, you get an interview call, just interview call, and then you start thinking, inshallah, tomorrow I'll go, and then I will have job, I'll have this, this, this. I don't know from interview, you jump to the other, na other nature, I don't know what you do. So it's a human nature, I'm not talking about you, but it's actually a nature-wise, we try to be all the time, try to see all things favorable, uh, which sometimes disturbs us. Anyway, you have this, these all four, for example, if you do have, I have an advice for you. Put them in, the, in one bag. When you go back home today, uh, don't throw this bag, the conference bag, please. When you go back home, try to find a very old bag, which you're supposed to just throw. Put these all, four, five, or any other problem you do have. Wallahu lazim, just throw that. And then you will see little relaxation. It's a philosophical, but try. It really is working. Do you know what is this? Have you seen this picture before? This is whole universe. And the earth is that white dot, you see? This is earth. This is whole universe, subhanAllah. The dotted which you see over there is the earth. And can you imagine how many problems we do, do have on this dot? See? This is simple, it's just tiny, tiny. But it's big one. So we have to redefine our approaches, actually. Nobody's responsible for me or for you. At times, parents are responsible till we become adult, or maybe some education, they're supposed to support us. There are many countries, I'm sure some of the uh, people from different countries you are, there are some of the countries, they always keep supporting their kids, even they are 30s and 25. There are some of the countries in Brazil and other kids, you know, they are just 18 and people stop giving them. They say, and they don't want to take. It's not that parents don't want to give. They want to give, but kids, they know. Because my friends, he will mind it if I take money from my parents still. Look at the world. It's a different demographics, different uh, designs. So you have to take care of how, how we have to define this one. Anyway, we continue this. This is the door we have to open. And this can be open throw these points. We have to learn from our mistakes immediately. I'm sure this is a very academic one, a point I would like to tell you. If you really learn from your own mistakes, you are wise. But if you learn from others' mistakes, you are genius. So you see how other people are working. So you try to see why he did mistake or what went wrong with that person. And then you see how much improvements you can bring in your life. Never let anything overcome you. Access of everything is bad. The first day people go to gym, and the first day they want to be Van Dam, impossible, impossible. It's a process, it's a process. First day you want to read whole book, this my thick book before sleeping. It's impossible, you have to bring some sequence in your life. Every day, if you read one page, you can finish so many books every day, you write one page. How many, uh, how many years have we been planning to write a book? How many years passed? And we had just one page and we would have done in a month 30 pages. How many pages we can finish? It's just approach how we do that. Pick a difficult boss, I told you. You will have wonderful exposure. And accept challenging job, the best experience. And register the course of the tough teacher. This I mentioned about this one, just for guideline, so that you will learn a lot about this. These are other initiatives which we have to work on them as well. Every day is a good day. So it was the first presentation was about academic things, very good uh, uh, points uh, which the professor has mentioned. So I thought I should change your mind to have a good day rather than keep corporate confusion for you. So you can have a great day since you are in Dubai. Enjoy Dubai. How many of you first time in Dubai? Oh man, you must enjoy Dubai. Don't, if you have flights tomorrow, day after tomorrow, cancel that. Very best attractions we do have over here. And this is the right time because still the weather is nice. But if, you, if the weather is getting hot afterwards, you won't be able to go outside. 
we have this experience. I've been here now 13 years. I keep coming and going, but I must tell you that this uh, uh, Dubai, and I invite you again, please, to come in October next year, the, I mean this year, uh, with the Expo 2020, and you will see the wonders. There are millions of people are coming around the world, inshallah, and you see how this Dubai will be changing. You see the wonders, what's going to happen. And there's, a, there's a, the site as well. Physically, you can see the Expo site. There's some fees as well. Try this before you fly back. Anyway, have fun in your career. Have a sense of ownership at your company. This term I have learned from Japanese, and uh, I always refer to my class. Anybody Japanese over here? I'm sorry, okay, yeah, okay. This, the, if you ask the, from any Japanese employee, Japanese companies employee, they will never uh, tell you that I'm working in Toyota. I'm working in Hyundai, Hyundai something. He will always tell you, I am Hyundai. I am a Toyota, actually. I am, they, they show the sense of ownership with that, you know, uh, which I learned this. Okay, separate home, this I told you, find some time for your health, please. Astaghfirullah, if, if something happens to you today and you think you are the best skilled worker, if something happens to you today, tomorrow somebody will else come to replace you to your job. So do not be serious about your corporations driving to reach the corporation so you're putting your risk at, at your life and you're not attending the uh, call of your sweetheart, of your husband or wife and because you are in the office and everything. No, sometimes you give them. It's okay. Take it easy. Don't be serious too much about this one. This really happens, you know. Don't uh, take the things which really affect you all the time. So this is really good. Good food. Good walk. I don't have time to walk. No, you have to. You have to. This again, I put this. Now I have, still have little time. I just a uh, little interactive because we will not have much time after the... A session is over, and a coffee maybe we can discuss. I just ask you two questions, please. And you have to answer whatever uh, the things you do have. You just join an organization, what do you want to do? Oh, I joined my company today. All right, what I'm going to do from today or tomorrow? Very good. Get acquaintance with the people. Okay, get across the people. Yes. Enjoy the work. Enjoy the work. Enjoy the work. Read the policies. When you read policy, do not question that why this is policy for me. Well, sometimes it happens when you join an organization, people ask you, oh, join this organization? Why? And you ask this person, when did you join? He will tell you, I'm here since 20 years, 30 years. Why you are asking me not to join this company? Why you have not left this company? This is a problem. So in this question, as you said about get acquaintance with the people, get acquaintance with the policies of the company and try to transform those policies. Accept this one. And from next day, you come and follow every policy of the company. Do not stay after five o'clock in the company just to give somebody that I'm working over here. I tell you, people who stay in the company more than the time required, they are the dead wood of this century. I must tell you. Please, you can have a different opinion with me. It's my own opinion. I have experience around the world. If your time is over, you have to leave the company. Don't sit unnecessarily. Because your boss, you know, nature will give you career, everything. You put your efforts and God is with you as well. But then, Unnecessary. You cannot give somebody impression to be a dead wood and you, uh, you just uh, uh, spoil your evenings off and walking off and everything because they can replace you at any time. The second question, you're just leaving an organization. What you want to do? I'm sorry? Wish them well. It's a great point, wish them well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have this point over here once again that whenever you leave an organization or you have planned to leave an organization, do not tell anybody. And whenever you leave, especially with human resource department. Hi, how are you? Department. HR department is actually not the friend of anybody in the world. And sometimes I believe that HR department is the only department that will go to heaven or hell. I'm not sure, you know, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes they create a lot of problem. They are so best friend, 
and after that, when you resign, you will be sitting outside, they will not recognize you even. So I advise you, ladies and gentlemen, is that, that whenever you're working in a company, you have to have best communication with HR department, complete your responsibilities, policies and everything. You just go with so polite way, as she said, wish them good, and then you walk away. That's it. This world is so small. If you fight with one organization, you go to another organization, people come to know where are you working, they can call. So you go positively. This will help us. Whenever you leave an organization, you always leave with the best point. And don't let people know. You know, there are two rules in this world. Only two rules. Rule number one, do not tell everything you know. Rule number one, do not tell everything you know. Rule number second, go to rule number one. <laughs> there is second, we don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen. So keep some of the things in your mind. This, I just put this because uh, some of you are new in Dubai. These three uh, things always give you happiness. When you are in difficult time to search somebody, even if you are exam and you are exposed to mobile, you can find Google and solve the problems. Even if you are having online tests, when other computers open to you, it can help you. Or when you Google Maps and other things, oh, the many facilities you do have. But Dubai I always say uh, dreams to come true. Lots of people. Still, Dubai is growing, so please check it out. Switzerland is one of the other destinations for your uh, holidays and everything. You must go, and you will enjoy that. This is me. I have the LinkedIn profile. The same name you can browse. You can uh, invite me. I can join your uh, uh, your LinkedIn profile as well. I have the YouTube channel. I started uh, the YouTube channel for writing some of the things and uh, giving lectures, and also some of the uh, points which are happening daily. So you can uh, browse my YouTube channel as well. It's a really great honor and pleasure talking to you, ladies and gentlemen, this morning. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. If you have any question, anything, or if you have any problem you can share, we'll try to solve that with happiness. See? Mashallah, no problem. That's great. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.